Welcome to a Prevent Connect podcast, where we explore the prevention of violence against women. This is a project of the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Hello everyone, this is Meghna Bhatt from Prevent Connect. I'm so excited to be here today with our guest speakers uh, from uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago about Reimagining Masculinities Initiative, and it is a collaboration among the seven centers for cultural understanding and social change at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Okay, so um, could you give us a brief description of the RMI program? Uh, yes, so hi, so my name is Mario Lucero, uh, preferred pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm the assistant director at the Latino Cultural Center. So yeah, so RMI, Reimagining Masculinities Initiative, so RMI is a collaborative project uh, between the seven cultural centers here at UIC, and it's a collaborative project um, that focuses on on uh, masculinity and what it means to be masculine. So trying to unpack that uh, from different perspectives, from different backgrounds. And uh, we pretty much explore um, the intersections of masculinity and masculinities, right, and, and gender. So this is a great uh, opportunity uh, for the seven cultural centers to work together and kind of uh, explore, right, what it means to be masculine. So how do we do this, right? We mostly use a dialogue platform, so storytelling. Um, to share different perspectives on how we perceive masculinity or how it affects us or or how how we how we view it um, but we also do a lot of um we use a lot of uh we do a lot of public programs through through showing films like film screens and having conversations afterwards and a lot of interactive workshops so the one that comes to mind the best and that's why i'm wearing this bow tie is because uh, we do uh, bow tie, like bow tie making workshops or bow tie tying workshops, um, where we use the bow tie as a metaphor to kind of understand masculinity, because we believe that uh, unpacking masculinity or understanding it uh, can be a very frustrating or difficult situation. And similar to tying a bow tie, sometimes you have to ask for help uh, to learn how to tie one. And it might, and sometimes it's very frustrating to learn how to tie a bow tie for the, for the first time. So. Um, we try to keep it very interactive and fun, but and there's always different topics. So I know uh, our colleagues will give us some examples of the different topics that we have um, uh, engaged with through this initiative. So who's primarily the audience for RMI? Sure. Uh, hello, my name is Jeffrey Alton. I'm the Associate Director of the Asian American Resource and Cultural Center. I use he, him, and his pronouns. Uh, the primary audience, when we first started with RMI, it was male-identified folks. Um, but we had since grown to include anyone who wants to come and learn about masculinities. Um, so our audiences have been primarily, I think, uh, female identified folks. Uh, but it's always been um, good. We've always averaged anywhere between uh, 15 to 30 folks at our, our largest events. We've had up to 150 Um so yeah, our primary audience is also college students, staff, and faculty. Um, and I think our, our largest participants are college students. Thank you. So this is very exciting. It reaches to like the campus community, even though you know there are students who are most, you know, who kind of comprise your, uh, your audience comprises of the students, but it's also to the faculty and everybody else on the community. Um, on the campus, which is which is exciting. Um, so what role do you envision men in preventing sexual assault and domestic violence? Hi, I'm Eliana Figueroa, and I go as she, her, they, them. I'm the Education and Outreach Specialist for the Women's Leadership and Resource Center, and one of the programs that's part of the Women's Center is Campus Advocacy Network, which provides advocacy for survivors of interpersonal violence. So a lot of the work that I do as an educator is to engage students on campus on topics like sexual violence and domestic violence. And so for me, I think one of the biggest challenges is engaging people that are male identify or who are masculine and I feel like these are really vital people to help bring awareness to this issue basically because we know that most perpetrators of these crimes are male identified or are masculine and if I'm talking to a group of men the majority of the time it's really hard for them to engage with me it's I, I sometimes witness the ways that they just don't pay attention to me as someone who is a woman or who's femme. So I think what I really ask for from a lot of men and masculine folks is to have those conversations with other masculine folks, right? Because those are the people that are gonna listen to you the most. Um, you're gonna have the best influence on those individuals. And so that's 
that's how I imagine the role that other men are playing in the movement. Um, I think it would also re be really great to kind of have masculine folks embrace vulnerability a little bit more when it comes to these topics, right? And also talk about the ways that they've been harmed or perpetrated against. And I think it's difficult for anyone to speak out, but I think we definitely need to hear from masculine folks who are also survivors of these things. Ileana mentioned about the role of men in preventing sexual assault and domestic violence, but I think, um, you know, in addition to lessons learned, there are always some challenges and hurdles that, are, you know, are experienced while implementing these programs on campus. So the next question is, what have been the challenges engaging masculine folks in these programs and how has it been critical, you know, within the sexual violence prevention field? Yeah, so um, S. Simmons, Program Director at the Gender and Sexuality Center, um, S or they, them, theirs pronouns. You know, I think um, there are a couple of challenges that I think maybe aren't necessarily related to um, being masculine, but I think is important to name. So like being at a largely commuter institution is absolutely a big hur hurdle for us in getting students to engage in programming. And so we offer food as a way, you know, of getting college students in the door. Um, other challenges that I think we have encountered is just we these these are folks that are not engaged in our programs, right? So it's not like they're already coming to us and now this is another touch point. Like the Reimagining Masculinities initiative is trying to touch those people that we don't already touch. And so identifying ways to um, connect with the people that we don't already touch, right? So um, that has been challenging given, you know, the work that we do. But I think we've done a really good job of addressing those challenges by connecting with fraternities, by connecting with other um, units and departments that work with males and uh, masculine folks to say, hey, can we partner on a program? Can we bring our folks together so that we can get more masculine folks in the room? I'm also wondering, which I don't think we've ever said this together, but like I'm wondering if the um, the folks that are are the folks that are coming to RMI are uh, primarily or or largely female or woman identified, and I wonder if that um, inhibits some males from actually engaging in the space because I think I have noticed at a couple of programs where there are a couple men there at the beginning, and then when it's about time to get started they've exited. Now, maybe they have class or whatever, but I also think that, especially if we're talking about storytelling and getting vulnerable, that could be one of those things where it's like, well, I don't want to share that in this mixed company, if you will. So I think, mm -hmm. although we haven't necessarily um, talked about it, I think that that is one of the challenges as well. Thank you. Um, so I know, I mean, the last question is, um, in terms of all these discussions, these conversations and interactive workshops are mainly like steps towards changing the culture on campus and kind of unmasking what masculinity means and, you know, in, in terms of uh, violence prevention. Um, how has RMI uniquely contributed to shifting the campus and community culture in which, you know, in how we look at sexual violence and rape culture? Well, thank you for that question. I'm Lori Barthes Baptista. I'm the director of the African American Cultural Center, and I go by she, her, hers. I think there's two main ways that this happens. One, just the fact that it's an initiative that emerged out of the collaborative effort of the staff of the cultural centers. So this wasn't a university policy. This wasn't a mandate. This wasn't a requirement. So it's a very assets-based driven approach, right? And so the whole idea of it is that it's coming out of the expertise of our staff who have also been on the other side of the problems, either troubleshooting in response to something or advocating on behalf of someone who has been a victim of sexual violence or someone who has gone through maybe a, a judicial process um, through university, through um, student affairs because they've been on the other side of it. So that's one thing. I think the other thing is to it, because it's not a punitive thing, it's not a requirement, it's not a policy, it's kind of grassroots, um, it opens up a space to consider masculinity then from multiple points of view and also to consider it in multiple formats and contexts. So the strategies that the staff use, for example, whether it's storytelling or dialogue or workshops or even we, there was a program that looked at comic books, it provides a different venue or a forum for um, folks to come together and really consider how then is masculinity normalized or how are certain behaviors 
either normalized or pathologized and where do they kind of reside in these other formats and then how does that place where they exist make it possible that these behaviors then happen outside of that so it leaves a space where the critique is not of the behavior of the person in the moment but of the context in which the behavior exists and then the dialogue kind of unpacks a lot of that so i think the biggest change then is that this isn't a punitive thing you're not coming here because you did something wrong but it it leaves room for some other possibility to happen. So I think that's really important. And I think it's a, a compliment then to the necessary advocacy efforts that we do have. Um, time and sharing about uh, Reimagining Masculinities Initiative Program at the University of Illinois, Chicago. For information about the past and probably future workshops you know, held at UIC in fall and contact information, we will be putting the links on the blog post. So feel free to follow them and contact them if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this Prevent Connect podcast. Prevent Connect is a project of the California Coalition Against Sexual Assault with funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The views presented on Prevent Connect are not necessarily the views of the United States government, the CDC, or CalCASA. To learn more about Prevent Connect, visit www.preventconnect.org. For more information about CalCASA's mission, or to show your support, visit calcasa.org. That's C-A-L-C-A-S-A dot O-R-G.